Hey everybody, Dave here, Hidden Freedom, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna go over the top 10 reasons why I think that ETFs are better than single stock dividend investing. So in this video, we'll just cover the top 10 reasons why I think that ETFs are better than single stock dividend investing. We're not gonna cover any of the negatives uh, because obviously there's some negatives as well, right? So you take it for what it is. These are in a all random order. So if you're interested in seeing future videos like this, go ahead and like and subscribe and set that bell notification so you get notified when I send out a new video. So let's not waste any time. Let's go ahead and get started. The first reason why the ETFs are better than single stock investing is you don't have to join conference calls, right? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for standing by and welcome to the Q4 2021 Intel Corp Earnings Conference Call. Now, I don't know if anybody here has listened to conference calls. There's been quite a few conference calls I've listened into over the years. When you're in single stocks, you know, you got the Microsofts, the Apples, you got the Abvi, you got the Caterpillar, you got the 3M, you got the Procter & Gamble's and all that stuff. Now, if you're a person that wants to know how your stocks are doing, you should really be joining those conference calls. Now, do you have to? No, you don't. Um, if you're investing in the best companies in the world, and this has been my argument for years, if you're investing in the best companies in the world that you, products that you use every day, then do you really even need to be joining those conference calls, right? And they're pretty dry, uh, and they they talk kind of weird lingo in there too, you know? So, uh, why, why did this quarter that you posted less gains than you did last quarter when you said you're going to post better gains this quarter i don't understand can you provide a little color on why the gains were lower and the revenue was lower than last quarter thank you our next question comes from the line of harry and sir with jp morgan your line is open hi good afternoon thanks for taking my question so uh, on in on Intel Foundry services, you know, the peers. And that's the type of, you know, the talk that they just provide on there. Um, it's pretty interesting. And I implore everybody, is that the right word? To everybody to listen to a conference call, just to kind of have an have idea. They normally, the CEO and the, you know, CFO or whatever, they normally just provide a prepared statement and then they answer questions. Uh, I, you know, I, I would say everybody should just join one just to kind of have an idea of what they're all about and all that. But if you're investing in the best companies in the world, do you really need to be joining those? Probably not. The number two reasons is they're easy to manage. ETFs are easy to manage. So you got SCHD is what I'm going to use for the example here. 105 holdings in this particular ETF. So are you going to own 105 holdings in your dividend portfolio? Um, you know, we're talking about individual stocks. That's a lot of stocks. So you can easily manage it with just one ETF. Cover 105 holdings there. And most stocks you... If you know in this in this particular ETF, you probably wouldn't own in your individual dividend portfolio because it's just too much to have in a portfolio. But you get it covered here in one single ETF. The number three reason is an ETF is diversified. Now, could you do that with a dividend portfolio, a single stock dividend portfolio? Certainly, you could. I do have a dividend portfolio here, which we'll look at kind of a hybrid approach so i got a bunch of individual single stocks there which we're talking about so we got apple through uh, at&t there um and i always tr talk about trying to keep the allocation similar to what the sp 500s are which you can see sp 500 excuse me so you can see my allocation here for the individual stocks and i try to keep them very close to the 11 sectors of the sp 500 and that's you know very tough to do you know especially when you keep adding more stocks to the portfolio and you got to make sure you have the right sectors in there um, and that's kind of uh, tough to do when it comes to an ETF guess what they do that for you if we scroll down here we can see the top 10 holdings right there we can see that they are invested in all 11 sectors, including, well, actually real estate zero right now um, and utilities are zero. So that's interesting. Um, they actually might have something less than zero, but um, it may not show on there and that's fine. So there are heavy financials right now, which is probably actually a good thing considering interest rates will go up. 
So what you get here is you get um, automatic diversification in the ETF and they handle all that for you. So you don't have to kind of manage that because everybody really should be making sure they're in a law 11 sectors or at least playing the hot sector um, and kind of doing that in a single stock dividend portfolio is kind of tough. So that's what you get with an ETF. You get automatic diversification across 105 stocks there and uh, that'll be all handled for you for the next hot item or the next hot sector. Number four is the fact that being in a, just a one ETF, SCHD is a good example here, but there's a ton of other options, right? VYM, you got DGRO, um, you got another one from iShares, I'm not mistaken, um, SPHD, which is I'm not a fan of, you got SCHD, which I'm a fan of. Uh, there's a lot of options there, right? But in this case here, you only have to own one, so you can dollar cost average, set and forget, is what I like to call it. Uh, and a good platform to do that with is M1 Finance, where you can actually automatically have it transfer on you know every uh, other Friday when you get paid. The money will come in here, and you can have an auto-invest into your ETF, your single ETF in here. SCHD is a good example. I got three of them in here. Um, these are not necessarily dividend ETFs, although every one of these do pay a dividend. Uh, and you can have it automatically uh, just you know invest in those. So that's easy dollar cost averaging right there. Money will come out of your checking account, automatically get balanced across your slices, and it'll be just automatic DCA. Having individual stocks, that's a little bit tougher, right? If we go here to my portfolio, what are you going to do here? There's not a lot of options out there. Not a lot of brokers will let you automatically transfer money into your account. And then it's definitely not going to split your money across. You know, I, I'm using Schwab here. It's definitely not going to split your money across every single one of your dividend stocks. So you got to determine and kind of make um, a decision right there, right? And you might get stuck making a decision, what should I put this money in, and then trying to keep the allocations where they need to be and all that stuff. So guess what, with an ETF, set and forget. Money comes out of your check automatically, automatically gets invested into a single ETF, and then it's automatically put across you know, 105 stocks. And you, know, you could get stuck there um, trying to invest in a single stock, making a determination there. And I know a lot of people might have some analysis paralysis with that. So there you go. M1 Finance is a great platform for people that are want to set and forget and DCA across um, into their ETF. And there's not a lot of other platforms to do that. Robo investors or excuse me, robo platforms will do that. But I don't really agree with the robo platforms. You're actually going to pay in higher expense ratios as well or higher expenses, I should say. And M1 is still doing the $50 uh, referral. So if you want to sign up through my link, which is in the first pinned comment, you get 50 bucks, I get 50 bucks if you open an account and deposit 100 bucks. So that's a 50% return on your money. So I would highly recommend checking out M1 Finance for the people that want to just set and forget, not think about it for you know, 20, 30 years, 40 years, 10 years, doesn't really matter. Um, it's one of the best platforms out there for people that just want to get invested and uh, make things simple. So check out that first pinned comment for the referral link. Number five is predictable returns. With one single ETF there, it's very easy to track what your returns are. It's very easy to track what your dividend kager is. And uh, that just makes it simple. If you have a bunch of individual stocks like this, it makes it a lot more difficult to figure out what your actual return is and what your dividend kager is and all the other metrics that I actually follow here. Without having a spreadsheet, it's very tough to track all that information. You actually pretty much need a some sort of tracker to track all your single dividend stocks. It's very tough to do without some sort of tracker. And that's the whole reason why I came up with this Google spreadsheet here so I could track all the dividend stocks and know what my metrics are. With a single ETF, that is not an issue at all because all you need to do is go to like um, Finviz or Seeking Alpha and all the information's there for you. Um, you probably want to double check it. 
Uh, you could go to Schwab and check the information there as well. But if you are doing single dividend stocks, you're going to have to do that on your own using either a free service or a Google Sheet like I have here. Uh, so there you go. It's just a lot easier with a single dividend ETF. Um, you know, it's pretty much uh, set and forget, right? Number six is simplified taxes because you only got one ETF there. You have a pretty easy tax, uh, you know, it's just one document that's going to have one ETF in there. And it's a lot easier to track one ETF than it is to track 30 stocks. So simplified taxes, I would say, would be another uh, reason why ETFs are just better than single dividend stocks. Number seven is no analysis paralysis, right? Um, trying to determine what stocks to put in your dividend portfolio, single stock dividend portfolio. You could get stuck trying and watching, you know, a thousand videos and why Caterpillar's good, why Caterpillar's not good. I don't know which one I should have. Should I have Caterpillar? Should I have Deer? Should I have Cummings? What, what should I have, right? Uh, should I have Abvi? Should I have Pfizer, I can't figure out what stocks to put in my dividend portfolio. Well, guess what? Investing in a single ETF like SCHD, for example, it's already determined for you. You had 105 holdings there. There's the top five holdings, excuse me, the top 10 holdings, and it's all done for you. You don't get stuck at doing analysis paralysis, trying to do research on you know 30 to 100 companies, watching a bunch of videos. And uh, there you go. It's all determined for you. That or The quicker you get invested into an ETF, um, the more money you're going to make. Instead of getting stuck for weeks trying to determine what stocks to put in your single stock dividend portfolio. Number eight is bigger dividend checks. Okay, now you're not going to get as many dividend checks. If you have a 30 stock portfolio or something like that, you're going to get a dividend check for every one of these dividend stocks here, but you will get bigger dividend checks quarterly, assuming you're in invested into an ETF that pays quarterly, like SCHD, for example, here. Uh, but those bigger dividend checks might be you know, more motivation for you, right? Instead of getting little teeny $5 or $20 checks multiple times, uh, could be every month, you're going to get one big fat check quarterly, you know? So that's uh, that could be a pro for some people. Number nine is easy to track. It's a lot easier to track a single ETF than it is to track 30 or 60 single stocks so it's easy to keep up with what's going on what the returns are the performance of that etf versus the performance of 30 to 60 single dividend stocks it's easier to keep up with you know company news and whatnot um, and i think that is a good reason to be in an etf over a bunch of stocks. So there you go, one ETF you gotta track and that's just a lot easier than a bunch of individual stocks. The last reason is, and now this one could be debatable for some people, is having 30 individual stocks. If you wanted to run and cover calls against 30 individual stocks, you're gonna have a pretty big portfolio. Um, to have 100 shares across 30 stocks, that's gonna be a pretty large portfolio considering some stocks are two, three hundred dollars, right? So with a single ETF, it's a lot easier to get a hundred shares where you could run a cover call, one contract against it. Um, you know, so if you're investing just a single ETF and you have a thousand shares, yeah, it's still gonna be a lot of money, but you can run 10 contracts against that if you want to bring additional capital in to supplement your dividends. And doing that across 30 individual stocks would kind of be tough because I've tried it. But the downside is there may not be every single dividend ETF has a lot of liquidity in the options, but it could still be an option. BYM is a good example because I ran cover calls on BYM. It's definitely doable and you'd have to have a lot of smaller portfolio. You can get started with just 100 shares 
and trying to get to the 100th share threshold in some meaningful stocks in a single stock dividend portfolio where you can actually make money would be kind of difficult. So there you go. There's the top 10 reasons why I think uh, dividend ETFs are better than single stock dividend investing. Now, obviously, like I said, I mentioned in the beginning of the video, there is pros and cons to both, but uh, that's not going to be covered in this video. So let me know in the comments if I left any reasons out that you think should have been added to the list on why ETFs are better than single stock dividend investing. Until next time, please go like, subscribe. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.